pray together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Jesus, we love you, we praise you, and we thank you that you have allowed us this uh, grace to be together, Lord, once again, to study your word and to come to know the power of your love and presence in our lives. Speak to us now today, Lord, and Lord, I just thank you for that, and thank you, Lord, that your word would go forth in the way you want it to, and you would touch the hearts of your women today, not so much from what I would say, but Lord, from what your will would be accomplished today, that we may come to know you in deeper and experiential ways, in Jesus' name, amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. And so here we are uh, with week two, and if you'd like to read that scripture, or if you memorize it, let's say it together. He proved himself their Savior in all their troubles. It was neither messenger nor angel, but his presence that saved them. Amen. And one of the things that I wrote in my meditation was, Dear Jesus, I know there was never any need for you to prove yourself, yet you were present for me in my times of troubles when I needed you, especially when I suffered the consequences of my sin. You forgave me and helped me through my suffering. You have never left me and you've never left me down in my need. I have such a grateful heart for you, Lord. I've invited Kelly to come and share her answer with you on that scripture day. Mm -hmm. I said, Dear Jesus, I recently had the opportunity to witness to my dad about how you are my very best friend. And you are always with me to console me in all my troubles. Of course, a person who is living outside of faith just doesn't get it. But I have accepted your gift of faith, and I trust that you are always present to me through the power and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Of course, there's not many things that I um, understand about this mystery. But I do know that somehow, through the sacrament of baptism, I was united to you and became a tabernacle of the Most High God. In all my troubles, you have been with me. But during that time of faithlessness, where I fell away from you, I lost sight of that truth. I couldn't hear your gentle voice because I was listening to other voices. And I couldn't follow your guidance because I was too busy walking in my own way. But you saved me from myself as much as you saved me from the enemy. You brought me back to faith and to the life-changing realization that you are always present, always available to be called upon, always lifting me up, always saving, and always sanctifying. Wow, Lord, your presence is a forever gift that I'm so grateful for. Please help me to always be present to you as best I can. Help me to listen and be still. still while at the same time be active and busy about the business of our Father. Amen. The Lord spoke to my heart and he said, yes, the flame of love I have placed within you is always present. It is the fire of my love, which is a consuming fire. I am there to consume the darkness and fill with light. Wherever there is the coldness of evil and indifference, I am there to burn it away and transform anything that is sinful and indifferent to a fervent fire of love for me. My flame will never be extinguished in you. I have given myself to you now and forever. Come to me often in that quiet place of your soul where I dwell. There I will enlighten you and strengthen you and fill you with my life-giving grace. I will pour out my love in a fiery torrent of mercy, and I will bring you to a heightened awareness of my presence within you. As you do this and as you receive the graces I will give, you will find yourself immersed in my heart as I am immersed in yours. Amen. Praise be Jesus. Amen. We're going to look at three points today. God causes extraordinary events uh, by that burning bush, we know. And then God calls ordinary people and brings them into an extraordinary state. And God is the exalted I am. We live in a 
a society that considers everyone over 30 over the hill. I wonder what the person with that mentality would think of Moses leading the people out of Egypt. At the age of 40 years old, Moses wanted to help his people and accidentally killed an Egyptian and fled into the desert. He was so terrified that he would be punished. He had the desire to help, yet the, the way he went about helping to deliver his brother Israelites was not God's way. Moses fled into the desert because of the punishment that he might uh, come under. And Moses was in the desert, can you imagine, for 40 years. Why would Moses need to live 40 years in the desert before God was ready to use him? A desert place is a barren place where there are no distractions. And I wanted to share the scripture with you in Hosea. The Lord says, that is why I am going to lure her and lead her out into the wilderness desert, and there will I speak to her heart. I am going to give her back her vineyards and make the valley of Achor a gateway of hope. There she will respond to me as she did when she was young, as she did when she came out of the land of Egypt. And so there is that uh, scripture that tells us God will bring us out into a desert place sometimes, just like he did when we were uh, locked in our homes with the COVID. That was sometimes a desert place for many of us because we weren't able to gather together in worship and praise and with the Lord, and we were locked out of our churches. And so it was, it was quite a time from March to June 8th until we were able to come back to Mass again and be fed in the way that we really needed. So the scripture tells us that Moses had been trained up in the household of the Pharaoh. So he was a man who taught all the wisdom of the Egypts. He, he was taught all the wisdom of the Egyptians, Acts 7, 22 tells us. And he was a man with power both in his speech and in his actions. Moses was 40 years old, and that was when he thought he was strong and ready to deliver God's people. And the scriptures say that Moses thought his um, country and his countrymen would recognize that God had called him. That was Acts 7.25. And he would liberate them, and they would be liberated through him. But they did not. They didn't like it. They said, who appointed you to be our leader and judge? Well, at that time, God had not yet called Moses to lead the people out of Egypt. And at that time, Moses couldn't say God had, because it would be 40 years of desert experience before God would call Moses at that burning bush. By this time, I'm sure Moses must have felt as if he had lost a little of his personal vim and vigor at the age of 80. He at least had lost his pride. He must have felt like a nobody. But that is when God can work. He's, he needs a nobody so that he can make a somebody for his use. God then was ready to use him. There's a scripture that says, in our weakness, God's power can be perfected. That's 2 Corinthians 12, 9. For when we are weak, he is strong. And Hebrews 11 says, by faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to endure ill treatment with the people of God, than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin. It is when Moses is at the age of 80 that God determines Moses is ready to hear him. Now, God does not want to break our spirits, but he cannot use pride. And I guess it took 40 years to work out of the pride. Now, I don't know which ones of you are near 80 or, or at 80, but if you are, you're just ready for God to use you. So step up to it. <laughs> but he cannot use pride, and so at the time of life that Moses was ready to retire, God was ready to put him to work. And so did you notice the scripture references in your lesson how God accomplished great things when people humbled themselves before God? St. James in his letter says, Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up, James um, 4, 7 through 10. Well, Moses was out tending the flock, for his father-in-law, Jethro, and he saw a bush that looked like it was burning, but it was not being consumed by the fire, so he couldn't figure it out. Now our scripture says, um, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in the shape of a flame of fire coming from the middle of a bush. 
Now this would be considered a theophany, God revealing himself in some way, which is defined as an appearance of God. A theophany is an appearance of God. It could be the Father, Son, or Holy Spirit. But we know it is God because when the angel of the Lord, some commentaries say that the angel of the Lord is the pre-incarnate Christ, and at times that would be revealed. But we know it is God because he speaks in the first person. And so... That's how we know the angel of the Lord is God himself. When the scripture says an angel of the Lord, that means that he is a messenger that God has sent. Now, when Moses started to draw near, God speaks and says, Moses, Moses. And Moses answered, here I am. And God said, take off your shoes for the place on which you stand is holy ground. And then God identified himself by saying, I am the God of your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Moses covered his face and was afraid to even look at God because he knew as a Jewish man that if anyone who looked on God would die. But God spoke and said this, and I'm going to read uh, Exodus verse 7 to you. And it says this, and as I said, God is speaking in the first person. And verse 7 says, and Yahweh said this, Yahweh is the I am who I am. I have seen the miserable state of my people in Egypt. I have heard their appeal to be free of their slave drivers. Yes, I am well aware of their sufferings. I mean to deliver them out of the hands of the Egyptians and bring them up out of that land to a land rich and broad, a land where milk and honey will flow. And so God spoke that word, Yahweh, and that's what he intended to do. And he was going to use Moses to do that. Now Moses' answer is pretty interesting. He says, who am I? He asks, and God says, I will be with you. That was the answer. But who God is, is what counts. There's something that um, I heard many years ago. I am who I am in Christ. Nothing more, nothing less. Nothing more that I would have pride because of who I am as a Christian and belonging to Christ. And nothing less because we are children of God. We are daughters of the Most High God. And so we must remember that. So I am who I am in Christ, nothing more and nothing less. Now who God is is what counts. I think that Moses' answer is pretty typical of everyone whom God calls. We always think of ourselves and our capabilities and we know we're not capable. Remember. God doesn't want our capabilities. He wants our availabilities. It is his power that he wants to manifest. It took 40 years in a desert place to rid Moses of his personal pride and his personal power, thinking that he could do it all. Doesn't it make you want to say, okay, God, I surrender. I surrender it all. There's a little story of the potter. I don't know if you've heard this, but we heard it at a retreat one time through Father Ray Elam many, many years ago, like 1984, I think. Um, there was a potter, and the potter needed a vessel. He was looking at the shelves of all of the uh, vessels that he had made, beautiful crystal ones, other kind of pottery ones, everything. But he was looking for a specific purpose that he needed. And at the very back on the lower shelf, he said, ah, this is the one I want. And it was an earthen vessel, and it had cracks in it, and it was an odd shape also. And he took that and this was perfect for his purpose, he said. So when he filled it with the living water, it leaked on everything. So he took it outside, filled it with the living water, and so this living holy water spread every place. And that's kind of who we are. We're sometimes cracked pots. And we know God wants to use us anyway. Okay? Our part is to surrender to God. And vanity asks the question, who am I? But the person of faith knows it is the I am that brings the power. Not by might and not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. God revealed, to him, God revealed himself to Moses by saying, tell them, I am sent to you. And the interpretation is, I am who I am. That is what Yahweh means. God said, this is the name for all time. By this name, I shall be invoked for all generations to come, Exodus 3.15 says. Now, that was what was so startling to the people when Jesus used this title of himself. He proclaimed he was the I Am. And there are seven 
scriptures in the book of John that says, I am. I am the living water. I am the light of the world. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the resurrection power of God. I am the living bread come down from heaven. I am the good shepherd. And so I am the door, the gateway to heaven. And so we know Jesus used that terminology about himself that he was saying who he was. I am who I am. And he did not say, I will be, because he is not a God who will only be experienced in the distant future. He is not a God who says, I was, because he is not a God who is in the past and no longer exists. He is the God who is the I am and ever present to us each moment. A God who is Emmanuel. He is God with us here in this present moment. God is with us. The same God yesterday, today, and forever, the scripture says in Hebrews. As I considered this scripture, it was one that led me to want to experience God in the present moment. And I hungered to know him and know his presence. And I knew that led me to a very silent and very still so that I could hear God uh, speak to me. And we do have to be silent and still to hear our holy God. Even though I have to say this, sometimes when we are praising and worshiping God, God will speak to us. And he will, he will trust us. So it's not only in the silence. It could be in circumstances or consequences or something different like that. Now God told Moses he was to go and gather the elders of Israel together and tell them of his experience with God and let them know that he, God, had resolved to bring them out of Egypt where they had been um, oppressed and they had been oppressed for 400 years. And God said to Moses, and tell his people about how about himself. What do you do? Do you say, who am I, Lord? I'm not worthy to, to talk to other people about you. Or do you trust God is the great I am, the all-powerful one who is in you? You are a temple of the Holy Spirit. And the scripture this morning at Mass, the gospel was from Luke. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open to you. And it goes on with what Father among you would give uh, scorpion for an egg or a stone for bread. If you then are weak and know how to give your children what is good, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? So we must ask for the Holy Spirit and ask God to guide us. Um, Dawn was sharing with us one day, with Kenny and I, that she just talks to God all day long. She asks Him, what am I supposed to do now, Lord? And so it's like every minute, God is with us and we do need to recognize His presence, Emmanuel. Do you know that his, God has called you? Do you know that you are chosen by God? I hope so. I love the song we sang this morning. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided, I have chosen to follow Jesus when I discovered his wonderful love for me. Let me share these scriptures, phrases with you. Jesus said, you did not choose me. No, I chose you and I commissioned you to go forth and bear fruit, eternal fruit, fruit that will last. What I command you is to love one another. And then the Father will give you anything that you ask in my name. What I command you is to love one another. Amen. And so that choice that, that we make, you, we think we did make a choice for Jesus, but he chose us before time began, we're told in Ephesians. He says, I have redeemed you. Isaiah 44 says, I formed you from your mother's womb, so do not be afraid. Yeshurun. Yeshurun means God is calling you my darling. And so, because I have chosen you. Isaiah 43 says, I have called you by name. You are mine. I am Yahweh, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Do not be afraid. And then Isaiah 44 says, For I will pour my spirit upon you and upon your descendants, my blessing upon your children. Yes, God chose Moses after many years of a desert experience. Moses was used by God in an amazing way. And God has chosen you. And even now, I believe that God is using all of you for a special purpose. Maybe to pray for your daughter-in-law. Maybe to pray for your husbands. Maybe to pray for your friends. Who knows? And maybe to speak a word of comfort. And I, I have this notion in me that a lot of people receive salvation and receive Jesus into their hearts when women meet and have a cup of coffee and share their stories. It's a very powerful moment at times because we can use that because Jesus is in you and you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And so just ask the Holy Spirit at times when you know you need him uh, to come and to help you. Um, and so we can pray that way. So God has chosen you. But will you be ready when he calls you to service? Are we ready? We have to say yes. 
if we are in a personal relationship with God, then we will be able to know his voice and in our souls that he is the one speaking to us. I had an experience one time, and I think I've shared this, and it actually is what led me into infused contemplation. And that story is that Kenny and I were in a car accident June 2nd, 1983. And um, as the car was turning and rolling, and it was a treasure of a time. Why do I cry about this? I'm sorry. <laughs> but anyway, the treasure was that God spoke to me when the car was turning over. And Kenny, I was saying to Kenny, are you okay? And he was asking me, are you okay? And um, my face had broken the windshield. You could see the imprint of my face on the windshield. I didn't have a seatbelt on. And, um, but um, my face was bleeding and I couldn't see. And so when I said that to Kenny, um, he shoved open his door. He couldn't get it open before, but he came around to me. But when he was out of the car, I audibly hold, heard the Lord, nothing will outweigh the supreme advantage of knowing Jesus as your Lord. And I love that. I love that. And that word just kept coming to me. Nothing can outweigh the supreme advantage of knowing Jesus Christ as our Lord. And we know him as Lord. And we need to follow him as Lord. He wants you to know his voice and know his voice in your soul. And anytime he wants to speak to you, God wants you to experience his love pouring out on you. He has done everything that is necessary to open the way for you to be in relationship with him and to help you enter into that throne to, to receive his mercy and grace of the Father. God sent Jesus, who is the way, and he said, I am the way, I am the truth and the life. God wants you to love him back, simply that. He just wants you to love him back. God set the Israelites free, and he wants you to be set free in every area of your life. So I want to invite you to enter into the silence, to close your eyes, and to just simply go to that place where you meet Jesus in your heart and in your soul. And I'm going to pray. Dear Lord, if there is anything within me that is blocking me from being free to fully love you, to fully be free from the slavery to sin, will you please reveal it to me today? Let your holy light move into my soul now and let it be healing. Today I surrender to you, Lord, right now. I want to say yes, Lord, as fully as I am able. I want to lay down every burden that has kept me in the desert place. And so, Lord, I surrender myself to you. I surrender my pride that I may know you in deep and loving ways. I surrender my worries to you. And Lord, I don't want to take them back so I place them and my trust in you and place my concerns and worries at the foot of the cross. I surrender my mind, for you have given me the mind of Christ. I surrender my strength, for you empower me with your Holy Spirit and the joy of you, Jesus, in my life is my strength. I surrender all doubt because you enable me to have faith in you. I surrender my life. For through my faith and the waters of baptism, you have given me eternal life and have made me a new creation. I surrender, Lord, and I ask for your will to be accomplished in my life so that my prayer might be, my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, and my spirit exalts in God my Savior. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And so, Lord, I want to become what you have called me to be. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Dear Jesus, thank you for this lesson today. Thank you for being present with us and allowing us to know your presence. And Lord, by the power of your love, transform us and renew us through this word in Jesus' name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.